Cystic fibrosis can present in many different ways and with many different symptoms. Early on in life, a child may have few or no symptoms, and the symptoms will vary with age, with disease severity, with what disease-causing mutations a child might have. Cystic fibrosis affects major body parts. The one we think about most often is the lungs. So people tend to have a chronic cough. They can actually make enough mucus that they'll cough it up. They can wheeze. They can have difficulty breathing. And they grow germs in their lungs that the rest of us tend not to have. Um, in the gastrointestinal system, which is like the stomach and the intestines, people do not digest food well, so they don't grow well. They can have a lot of diarrhea, um, very foul-smelling stools, and the sweat glands are a major area that's affected, and that's how we diagnose people with CF, because they put out far too much salt in their sweat. A normal respiratory tract moves mucus because there's liquid in the airway, and that liquid helps wash out bacteria. And that's what, how normal lungs function, because there's uh, sodium in the airway that pulls in water and keeps a wet environment inside the lungs. In the CF lung, that uh, CF protein is defective, so that sodium chloride exchange does not work properly. So CF lungs are very dry. So when they get exposed to bacteria, the, uh, their, their lungs do not move the bacteria because it's a dry environment. So they're, they're lacking that water level at the lung airway. So doing airway clearance therapies helps facilitate moving mucus and bacteria out of the lungs. A CF respiratory therapist helps to plan, teach, and deliver respiratory care to the CF center. We help the families to adjust their treatment plans so that they can include aerosol therapy, use of the nebulizer, and we teach them the different airway clearance devices. A nebulizer is a machine that is used to deliver aerosolized medications. So it's important to talk to your respiratory therapist on your CF care team, and they will teach you how to properly clean and disinfect your nebulizer machine. At a normal clinic visit for a patient, there's, there are numerous tests we do, and we do those quarterly. And those are, we, we gather sputum samples so we can send them to the lab to see what kind of bacteria is growing. So it's an important test to determine what their treatment is gonna be. We do pulmonary function tests. We, we look at lung volumes and flow rates in patients so we can tell if, you know, if there are changes in their lung status. We like to incorporate therapies that are portable, that they can do on their job, on their breaks at work, in school, they can take a break from their, their schoolwork. We teach them breathing techniques, how to move mucus through breathing at different lung levels, different uh, ways to force exhalation to get mucus out. You know, not everything works every day. So having choices and definitely things that work is very important. Another airway clearance therapy we use is called chest percussion. And you're actually cupping your hand and clapping against the chest, causing vibration. This also helps to dislodge mu mucus. The airway clearance that we do right now, we do manual CPT twice a day. When he's sick, we do it four times a day. We do it with his meds and his nebulized medications. So he gets albuterol, and, and it depends on if he's sick, if he has to have any other additional medication. So it can take a little longer, but for the most part, it's usually half an hour to an hour. So these are all techniques that we use, and, and exercise is a form of airway clearance, too. So I really promote you know, healthy living and, and incorporating exercise into a daily routine. A CF dietitian is responsible for making sure um, that children and adults with CF are growing well and meeting their nutrition needs so that they can remain healthy and have the energy that they need. In your stomach, stomach acid helps to break down the food um, and then it passes into your intestinal tract. In the intestinal tract, Pancreatic enzymes from an organ called the pancreas help to break down the food even smaller so it's small enough for your intestinal tract to absorb it so that you can use it. In cystic fibrosis, several of those points are changed. Stickier secretions in the gut can also cause some side effects like constipation or 
additional trouble absorbing food. Many people have loose stools. They have a lot of symptoms of malabsorption, things like gas, abdominal discomfort. One of the things that we do is to try and talk with people to learn about their symptoms and what we can help to normalize, to make people as comfortable as possible, and to make sure that they're absorbing the nutrients the way that they need to so that they can grow. In CF, we usually encourage a high protein, high calorie, high salt diet. The reason for this is that people with CF have increased nutrient needs because of recurrent infections and trying to keep that lung function up. At the same time, people with CF often have malabsorption issues and aren't able to take in all the calories and protein and other nutrients from their diet. And so we need to give a little bit extra to make sure that they're getting enough. Um, as far as salt goes, the underlying defect in the CFTR protein um, causes release of excess salt, and so we also want to be replacing that, otherwise it will cause electrolyte imbalances and can cause dehydration. Pancreatic enzymes are a medication that's FDA approved to be given to help people with CF or other issues with the pancreas to digest their food. The pancreatic enzymes replace enzymes that a body would normally be producing, but that for in CF, either not enough are being produced or they're not being fully released. After our first visit, you know, we found out that Madeline would obviously need enzymes. Um, and, and the way that we gave her, enzymes are actually in capsules, so we'd break the capsules open and put the little beads in applesauce. And that was something we learned in our first clinic visit. Our, our dietitian explained that to us. The number of enzymes changes too, because as, as your child gains weight and you know gets bigger, they're gonna need more. So we're always, our dietitian is fantastic. I'll shoot her an email and give her the current weight. Um, she'll check things, send me back if we need to do another half capsule or, or something like that. In general, Individuals with cystic fibrosis require 120 to 200 percent of the usual recommended dietary intake. It's difficult. It really gets difficult and parents and people with CF tell us that that's one of the hardest parts of having CF. But it's very important to adjust intake to make sure that people are maintaining optimal nutritional status. The simplest way to do this is to choose high calorie, high protein foods, um, things like nuts, cheese, um, meat with still the fat in it. If just choosing foods isn't doing enough for weight gain, then we'll start adding some what we call calorie boosters, adding things like butter or oils, avocado, nuts or seeds. If this still isn't quite enough to get them to their goal with calories, then we might start considering supplements. One of the last options that we would consider would be a G-button. This is just a small tube that's put through the abdominal wall into the stomach so that formula can be put through. And this can sometimes be a very convenient option for families because then the child can receive feedings at night that won't interfere with their daily schedule and won't cause that pressure to always be eating more. Jack actually uh, got his feeding tube when he was 15 months old. And so that was one thing that we had to come into the hospital and, and to be able to have that placed. We use that more of a support. It's not really kind of our, our main source of feeding. We just actually use it to plug him in at night. So that's where he gets the majority of his nutrients, the majority of his, of calories. his calories. After doing it, it's, it's not as difficult as I thought. It's, it's just what it is. We plug him in and he gets his food and he's happy, we're happy. Vitamins are very important in CF, and the reason that they come up is that some of the fat-soluble vitamins are prone to not being absorbed as well as they might be in, under normal circumstances. Um, those fat-soluble vitamins would be vitamins A, D, E, and K. The CF-specific vitamin supplements will help provide adequate levels. We also monitor vitamin levels in annual clinic visits to make sure that people are able to sustain their vitamin levels and their optimal nutrition. By the time people with CF are adults, possibly one in three will develop diabetes. Cystic fibrosis related diabetes, or CFRD, isn't really like typical juvenile onset diabetes or adult onset, but it is something that we monitor very closely. The CF Foundation recommends that monitoring for cystic fibrosis related diabetes start at about age 10, and they are monitored yearly with an oral glucose tolerance test. 
We want to provide good nutrition early and always. It's a great tool to help prevent the progression of disease and to keep people with cystic fibrosis as healthy as possible. I probably spend an hour to two the first time anyone ever asked me a question about reproduction. And we usually have multiple conversations after that. So when they are considering family planning, it's important for them to loop back with the care team so they can help them with further advice and recommendation. Male patients with cystic fibrosis have decreased fertility. The vast deference is gone, and there's no possibility of reproduction without assistance. For females with CF, it is common that many of them have difficulty getting pregnant due to some sticky discharge that is part of the basic defect of their CF disease. However, many of them can still become pregnant. This is a really, really difficult disease. It, infects, it affects multiple organ system. It requires a lot of effort to stay healthy. There are many different facets in which CF can impact someone's life. And so using all these various disciplines can help improve quality of life and overall stabilization of the disease. To learn more about this topic and how the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation can help you, visit cff.org or call 1-800-FIGHT-CF.